Hello, friends. Ever since it was announced that Desmos would be included on the AP Statistics exam, I've received many questions about different micro skills involving the Desmos calculator and statistics. But by far, the biggest question I receive is how to deal with discrete probability distributions and specifically, how do you find the expected value and standard deviation of such distributions? So unfortunately, Desmos does not uh, support weighted lists at this point, but that's okay. There's still ways to find the mean and standard deviation quite easily using the Desmos calculator. And also there's different ways that you can think about how to get students to interact with these probability distributions in a meaningful way. So on my screen here, I've created a distribution of skee-ball scores. I'm close to the Jersey Shore, so we're always thinking about things that we could do on the Jersey Shore boardwalk, and skee-ball is all the rage. Uh, we have scores here from 10 to 80. I put those in as X1, and Y1 is my probabilities. Now, I chose to do this using a table, and tables are accessed under the Add Item button on the top here, so I just go down the table. Some people might note that you could also use lists to do this, and that's true. Uh, I've chosen to use a table here for one very specific reason, and that's because I would like to display this distribution. So once I have these values in, I can I can go down to zoom fit here and click this, and I can see the probability distribution, get an idea of its shape, and maybe make some conjectures right now about what the mean of this distribution might be. It seems like its highest peak is at, is at 60, 70, 50, and 40 are kind of in second place here, and some lower values at 10, 20, 30, and 80 seems to be the lowest probability. And if I wanted to, I can even connect these. I can hold down this green dot here, and I could add lines to it. If I wanted to connect them here and get a better idea of the shape of the distribution, I could do that as well. Okay, so how do I find the expected value of this distribution? Well, think about how we find expected value in general. We take all the values and multiply them by their probabilities. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to type x1. And notice when I type x1, one automatically subscripts. You don't have to do anything fancy there. Times y1. And here I have all of the different values you would get if you multiplied x1 times y1. So if students were doing this on like an exam and had to show their work here, here are all of those values that we would expect students to write in the table. Well, what do we want to do next? Well, we want to add all those values together. So well, we can do that as well. We type in total just before it and put that in parentheses and I can see my expected value is 49.6. Now I'm going to go a little bit deeper with this as well. So I'm going to do some teaching tips here as well and not just compute things and do things that get students to uh, think about the distribution a little bit more. I'm going to give this a name. I'm going to call it M, M equals. And I'm going to display this as a vertical line. So I'm going to make a vertical line X equals M and I can see it here on my screen. So if X equals M, I might want that to be a little bit thinner or maybe dotted if I like and I can change the settings a little bit. Maybe that's a little too thin. Uh, 1.5, so I can display the expected value here and get students to think about, well, notice it looks like this mean is pushed a little bit towards the one side as opposed to the other. And why is that happening and have those conversations? And in fact, I might want to take this and give an additional challenge. And I have a challenge all set up here on the bottom of my screen. Let me move it up a little bit here. So my challenge is, can we adjust the probabilities so the expected value is between 60 and 70? What would have to happen there? So let's go ahead and do that. So how do I play around with these? So let's say, well, students might figure out that, oh, well, that means that the 60 and the 70 perhaps need to have a little bit higher probability. So I'm gonna change this to 0 0.30, change the seven uh, to point maybe two five. And what do we have now? A notice that my mean is updating 56.9, but there's a problem. By changing these probabilities, I no longer have a valid probability model. So how can I verify that? Well, I probably need to keep track of the total of the Y1s, which is right now 1.11. So we're going to have to play with this tricky balance. In fact, I'm going to move that up so I can play around with that. Let's see if we can get this to happen now. So we're going to lower some of these other probabilities to maybe 0.05 and 0.07 and uh, make this a 0.10 uh, maybe and make this a little, little bit lower. Oh, so I'm at 0.93 right now. My mean is 49.7. Let's see if we can move some things up here. So I'm inviting students to play in the space. I have 54.4. I'm still not there yet. I have to get between 60 and 70. Okay, let's pump it up even more. Let's move this to maybe 0 0.40. Maybe move this to 0.35. I am definitely heavy right now, so we're gonna lower some of these other probabilities. So we're getting students to think about what needs to happen how much do I need to lose here? It's tough to talk and do this at the same time. Oh, I'm 59.1, I'm so close. Okay, so what are we gonna do here? So I feel like that if I take out, uh, let's take out a little bit from here, that I can make this 
happen. Am I there yet? 56.9. All right, we're getting, oh, wait, I'm still a little bit light. 56.9, 0.96, Oh, so close. What are we going to get rid of? All right, let's trade off here to here. But think about all the learning. Ah, I'm at 60.1. There we go. So think about all the learning that goes on there to have to think about all the little micro skills that need to be done there for students to think about how to alter the expected value. Okay, we want to find standard deviation. Now, fortunately, standard deviation um, isn't something students often have to compute by hand or even on a calculator, but we can still do it here. And this one is going to take a little bit of work and a little bit of understanding of the formula. So think about how the formula for standard deviation works here. We take each of the values and subtract them from the mean. Okay, so we're going to do that. We're going to take each value, the x1s, and subtract them from the mean. And we need to square those. Okay, and they show up as a list here, but we also have to multiply them by their probabilities, which is the y ones. So we're doing everything that the formula would do, but we have to understand how to put it in here. We're going to add those all together. So we went to total, and I need parentheses to do that. So the total is 152.99. So I have the variance. I would like the square root of that. There's a couple things I could do. I could do the square root of 152.99, or I could just raise this um, to the 0.5 power if I wanted to as well. And I would get one, uh, was at 12.37. So mean and standard deviation of discrete probability distribution, you can do it, but also use the opportunity to think about how to involve students in the process.